Hey friends, good morning. I am um, in my hotel room <clears throat> in Laguna Beach and I was thinking, gosh, I wanna go live on Facebook this morning. Um, but truth, um, I need to get on some makeup. <laughs> I've got a conference all day. So I'm like, okay, what do I give up? Do I wanna give up my Facebook live or do I wanna give up my Facebook or my face, my literal face? And I love you all, but yeah, I'm not going without makeup. So if you can handle a Facebook Live with me putting on makeup, then welcome. If not, like seriously, if this is gonna annoy the heck out of you, just set the phone somewhere else and listen to me talk, but don't watch. Um, also, just remember that I'm like a middle-aged woman putting on makeup, and so I do it probably different. <laughs> Every time I've done a makeup Facebook Live, people are like, you use Mac? They're cruel to animals, and I'm like, come on. Come on, so please, please no comments like that because I love you. All right, good morning, guys. Um, I am in Laguna Beach for a business conference for the next three days with um, James Wedmore. I get to meet Amy Porterfield. How many of you know who that is? Um, and just a room full of really smart people. Okay, really smart people. And um, so excited to be here and to learn something. <clears throat> and so... Um, I put a post on my Facebook page yesterday um, and said uh, just that, uh, well, first of all, did you guys see my post yesterday that my Facebook page got verified? I literally woke up yesterday to an email um, from uh, Facebook that we verified your page and you now have the little blue check and I'm like, what on earth? It's like the heavens parted and the angels were singing and I may or may not have squealed in my kitchen. And so, um, so stinking excited about that on my Facebook page. But then I was at the airport and I did a post and here's what I said. I said that, um, and, and the post just struck a chord with a lot of people and I've gotten some DMs and that sort of thing. So here's what I said. I said that I was heading out to Laguna Beach and I've traveled for work um, the last three weeks in a row, which I've never done in my life, okay? Um, literally, I did not travel for work, you guys, until about three years ago, four years ago maybe, and, um, and then I was doing like a mastermind in Chicago, and so I would travel um, once a quarter. And I remember the first time I flew to Chicago by myself and I felt like such a big girl. Oh gosh, Caitlin, why did you tell me that? I didn't even notice the numbers. There are 600 people watching me put on makeup. Okay, but you're gonna wanna share this with any friends you have that's a mom, I'm telling you. So I remember the first time I'm sitting in an airport because I didn't fly until my mid to late 20s. Any of the rest of you? I didn't fly, I was scared to death of flying. Like I'm, um, now I'm healed, okay, God's healed me. But oh, I got a reminder here to pray for my brothers. Um, one of my brothers is deployed. And the other one I just pray for because I pray for them both. Uh, and I pray for them every Wednesday morning. That pops up on my screen. So um, I didn't fly until my mid-20s. And for a decade, I was like, like a white knuckle flyer. Like, uh, you know, I'm looking at the faces of the airline attendants <clears throat> to try to see, are they alarmed by this turbulence? Are we going down and they're just not telling anyone? Do you know what I mean? Anybody else? Like, the fear of flying was very real. Um, and then when I had kids, I realized, okay, I'm passing this fear on to them. And I could see in the face of my oldest son that he was starting to get nervous flying. And I'm like, oh no, I am not passing this crap on to my kids. My job is not to pass on my fears. My job is to teach my kids to do things afraid. And so I had to get really comfortable flying, which is funny because I hate I hate to, to fly. So anyway, I'm in the airport yesterday and I was saying that I'm getting ready to go on my third business trip in a row. And, um, and I was super excited about that, but that I never used to travel. And right now our house is up for sale. So literally I'm leaving my husband with three kids and, um, and showings. You know, we had a showing last night on the house. We've got a showing today on the house. By the way, I get to meet Coach Glitter today too, my friend Tiffany Bymaster. And, um, and so my eyebrows have to be on point. If you guys know who she is, she's a makeup artist to the stars. She's done like makeup on all of those like um, housewives of whatever show and she does Shalene Johnson's makeup. And so I can't, I can't go in with my brows looking sketchy. So, um, so I'm leaving Mr. Magic with three kids 
and a house that has to be shown last night and today. And there was a time years ago when I never would have done that. I never would have done that. Um, I wouldn't leave my kids and I'm going to tell you why. Jason and I felt very convicted, probably me more than him and the conviction part, that when my kids were small that I was to stay home and raise them and not work outside of the home. That was our own personal conviction, my own personal conviction. I wanted to be home with my kids. To my own detriment though, you guys, because listen, moms, listen up, okay? I want you to share this to your own page so you can listen to this later, you young mamas. The Bible says that God gently leads those with young, and I think sometimes he leads you with young with people who have already been through the toddler and the little kid stage, okay? So listen up. Somewhere along the way, I believed the lie. You ready? That the mom who spends the most time with her kids is the best mom. Mm. And I thought, if I'm out going to a painting school, by the way, if you saw my Facebook post, that there's no coffee, literally, you guys, some crazy favor of the Lord. I'll show you, if you hang on to the end of this video when my makeup's done, I'll show you my view. They put me in the honeymoon suite. So I put on Facebook this morning, there's no coffee. Like five minutes later, knock, knock, knock. A dude with coffee. What? And creamer, even though I didn't drink it. What the heck? So, somewhere along the way, I believe the lie that the best mom is the one that's always with her kids. And so it's always been super important to me for me to put my kids on the bus every morning and me to get my kids off the bus every morning. Me to be, you know, the last face they see, me to be the first see, face they see when they get home. There is value in that, okay? There is honor in that and there is goodness there, all right? But listen, I wouldn't go <clears throat> out of town or do anything for my business, which I was running from home. Sorry, hang on. Hang on. There, sorry. Because I thought, <clears throat> I don't know what I thought. Did I think that the whole family would implode without me? The truth is that's arrogance, mamas. Thinking that it's all gonna shut down if mama leaves. That is not the truth. Here's what the truth is, okay? We're gonna talk about the truth. <clears throat> And, and the other part of it was I missed, I would miss them. You know what I mean? Like, especially when they were younger. Now at 14, 15, and 9, they're much more self-sufficient. Um, so I, you know, I, I felt guilty. I felt all this mom guilt. How many of you listened to my podcast with Carrie Wilkerson um, where she talked about uh, uh, mom flicked? I love that. Hang on. I'm trying something different today. It's a lip stain. I don't know if I'm going to like it. Hang on. So the mom guilt, right? A totally real thing. And so <clears throat> the truth is that when you leave, your family appreciates you so much more. When I went to um, Mexico this summer for eight days with our oldest son on a missions trip, my husband texted me and I saved the screenshot and I reread it yesterday. And he said, oh my gosh, I don't give you enough credit for what you do. You deserve a massage, and what else did he say? A pedicure and a weekend off when you get home or something like that. Like the truth is when you're gone, it, you know, absence really does make the heart grow fonder. So that's what the truth is, okay? The truth is when mama has to leave, the rest of the family has to work as a team. The family has to work as a team anyway, but anytime you take dada or mama out, everybody else has to step up. I can remember when Mr. Magic traveled a lot more for work than what he does now. And, um, and I hated it. I hated every second of it because inevitably somebody would be puking, they'd have diarrhea, um, or it would be both. That would be, you know, when somebody would have a temperature and I'd have to be taking them up to, um, you know, the urgent care. Like inevitably that's what happened when they were small. I hated it. I hated when Mr. Magic was gone because the days just felt so stinking long. I will never forget one time I was in my car going somewhere thinking, I have just escaped my home <laughs> when the kids were little. Like, thank you, Jesus, I got out of this house for five seconds alone. And then I thought to myself, when is the last time I have not had a kiddo with me? And this was an eye-opener for me. 
And this was years ago when my kids were babies, remember, okay? And I thought, when was the last time I didn't have a kid with me? And it had been eight days. It had been eight days since I had ran to Target by myself, gone and done anything by myself, had one minute of alone time. 